Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan and I have an endless TBR. So one of my goals for this year has been to post on this channel at least two videos per week and I've made it thus far uh, with pre-scheduling and pre-filming so uh, crushing it. <laughs> In an effort to minimize the amount of background noise you get from my heater, which is about six feet from me, I am going to hold my microphone and see if that's going to help with the sound quality of the video overall. And I wanted to talk with today about my bookish goals for uh, 2023 and the reading challenges that I'd like to participate in. Um, these are coming from long-standing sort of bookish places as well as podcasts that I listen to am very behind on, but I enjoy listening to, and we'll just jump right in. The first challenge in which I'm participating is from Book Riot. This is their annual Read Harder Challenge. It features 24 unique prompts that looks to stretch your reading throughout the year um, as far as targeting different types of characters, authors, and experiences that a general reader may not reach for if they have a certain genre or type of book that they like to read. So I'm really excited about the prompt that reads, listen to an audiobook performed by a person of color of a book written by an author of color. And as you might remember, I have The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin on my list to read this year, and this one is narrated by Robin Miles, both of whom are persons of color. And uh, really looking forward to both of those experiences because Robin Miles like, can't be beat as far as her audiobook narration. The challenge that I'm nervous about is to read a book with under 500 Goodreads ratings. And I don't even know how to find those types of books. How many books do you know that have fewer than 500 Goodreads ratings? If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. <laughs> The next reading challenge that I've grabbed in the past couple of years and I'm looking forward to this year is the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge. This has uh, 40 regular prompts and 10 bonus prompts with a total of 50 prompts um, that again just give you sort of diverse and unique reading challenges to pick up a book. Um, I'm really excited for a book that you meant to read in 2022 and that could be just about anything. <laughs> um, I think I'm probably gonna go with Kelly Barnhill's When Women Were Dragons for this one and uh, hope to get to that shortly as I do have access to the audiobook. The Pop Sugar Challenge that I'm nervous about is to read a book published the year you were born. So I won't disclose that information, but I don't read a whole lot of backlist titles and going back um, 30 plus years. <laughs> is going to be a challenge for me uh, as far as finding a book within that time range as, as well as finding something that's going to be of interest to me as a reader. The next reading challenge has 12 prompts. They organize it monthly, but I don't know that I'm gonna hold to reading each prompt in the assigned month. As long as I hit all 12 prompts, I'm gonna say that I'm good with the reading challenge. This is from Novelist, which is a database that's available typically through your public library. It really helps with uh, what librarians call reader's advisory or the recommendations. So you come in and you say that I like this type of book and we might have a, a title to pull up uh, automatically, or we might go to Novelist and say, well, this person liked this one, let's look for a read alike. Um, so it really focuses on genres, themes, and appeals. So certain things that you like or tropes that you like in a book, we can find something that's similar. Um, again, it's a uh, it's part of the librarian's toolkit, but this database is typically available for use with your library card. So if you're interested, make sure to check it out with your local library. The one prompt that I'm most excited for in the Novelist Challenge is to start the new year off right by picking up a 2022 favorite from the Novelist Best of the Year lists. So they make uh, specific lists that are available for you to take a look at. And uh, I haven't looked at what's on this list, but I'm sure that I'll find a great one in there. The prompt that I'm most nervous about is to read a book that stars an unreliable or unnamed narrator. And that's only because I can't really think of something that I'd like to read off the top of my head. And I have so many books that are at the very top of my uh, 
very top of my to be read list and I don't know which one to pick. And then I've got two reading challenges from podcasts that I enjoy listening to. The first is Reading Glasses, which is a podcast about reading, not necessarily individual books, although they do provide book recommendations. This one's hosted by Mallory O'Meara and Bria Grant, both of whom are authors themselves. Um, they're both delightful people. They do author interviews. They talk about reading, the act of reading, reading accessories that they test out and give ratings in the form of, uh, in the form of pages. So something that they like might get four out of five pages, which I just think is adorable. I'm really behind on my podcasts, but I do know that I enjoy supporting these creators and look forward to their reading challenge every year. So the prompt that I'm excited about is to attend a library event. As a librarian, I host library events in which case I have to be there. So I am attending those events. Uh, and I have one coming up on Tuesday. So I get to check that off nice and early. We're reading Horse by Geraldine Brooks for a book club event. And the prompt that I'm most nervous about is to figure out your doghouse. So they have two different terms. One is your wheelhouse. The opposite is your doghouse. So when you think of a book that has all of the things that you really, really like, those elements, um, in other books that you also enjoy, that's known as your wheelhouse. So maybe you really like dual timeline historical fiction with really like romance heavy. Um, those things could be in your wheelhouse. Or if you like something that's science nonfiction focused on, you know, neuroscience or how we process our emotions or relate to animals, um, whether it's horse books or bird books, so many different topics, those would be your wheelhouse. So your doghouse are the things that you dislike in books, the things that'll make you put it down, rate it low. Um, and the way that I read it, sometimes I don't take the time to figure out what I don't like in a book. And maybe that means that I need to be a more critical reader or a more critical reviewer. Um, and the other element is that so often my reading is required for a book club, whether it's for work or with friends, it's something that I have to finish, um, regardless of whether or not I like these things. So it's not always at the top of my consciousness of what elements I find will turn me away from a particular book because I might have to read it anyway, if that makes sense. And the final reading challenge I'd like to partake in this year is with the Books in the Freezer podcast hosted by Steph at That's What She Read over on Instagram. Um, I've really liked following Steph for the past couple of years and her podcast is focused on horror titles. So Books in the Freezer comes from Friends where Joey feels the need to put The Shining and then Little Women in the freezer in order to keep it safe um, when he feels too frightened to read on. So that's where the name comes from and they rate their titles, uh, whether it's room temperature, fridge, or freezer level, how scary it is. Um, obviously this reading challenge focuses on horror titles and the challenge that I'm most excited to take on is a single author collection. And it turns out that one of my favorite authors, Paul Tremblay, has a short story collection coming out in July of this year. I might already have an arc for it, so I hope to get to that soon and gobble up his latest release um, or its pre-release if I'm able to get to it before its publication date and that would cover that prompt. And the prompt that I'm nervous about is a translated horror novel. Now the novel that comes to mind immediately is Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Vesterica, but I read that last year. I really loved it, read it on vacation, um, but I don't know if I have anything else that comes to mind immediately. But now that I'm thinking about it, Kane Minato might fit the bill for that prompt with either Confessions or Penance, both of which, which I've been meaning to read. So maybe I solved that problem and I'm not nervous about it anymore. In order to track these reading challenges, I have switched over from Goodreads to Storygraph. I can't manage both, so I 
put both in the description box to help you figure out which one that you want to connect with if you'd like to connect with me and the books that I am reading. But I'll be updating Storygraph from this point forward. Uh, and the nice thing about Storygraph is it hosts the reading challenges or a reading challenges option. It's all user created. So as a user, you can go in and say, these are the prompts for the Reading Glasses podcast 2023 reading challenge and then people can add it and they can add the titles that they're reading in order to fulfill the prompts. I really like that it's a way to document those challenges within the app itself um, and I am also going to be tracking my reading personally with the Book Riot reading tracker which has a tab for the Book Riot Read Harder challenge and then I just duplicate that tab to fit any of my other reading challenges so I can keep it in my personal spreadsheet as well as through the app Storygraph, and you're more than welcome to follow me on that platform to keep up with what I'm reading as I'm reading it. If you've made it this far in the video, make sure you leave me a book stack emoji in the comments and let me know if you participate in any annual reading challenges and what those might be. What are your favorite bookish podcasts? Make sure to like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you wanna see more from me, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.